recent sinkhole tragedy in Bangkok, a faulty pipe rapidly eroding the soil beneath the ground. What happens is that the cavity becomes so huge and eventually, why didn't the soil collapse when the cavity was small? This would have resulted in a minor accident. In fact, small holes do collapse. However, when the shape is curved, they don't. Arch strip structures can support much higher loads. If one fine morning, the doors of your house suddenly won't close, you should be worried. The formation of sinkholes gives very few external warning signs. What occurs is that the top shell of the sinkhole gets slightly compressed. This lowers the foundation a little bit creating an offset of a few millimeters between the door and the floor. Of course, we humans can't notice a floor shifting a few millimeters, but doors can. Sinkholes almost exclusively form in areas where the rock beneath the topsoil is soluble. For example, limestone, dolomite, and gypsum. Water is the active agent that creates the underground void. This water can come from rain or from broken pipes. Over the years, the soil can get eroded chemically and physically. Eventually, a cavern is formed. This kind of soil condition, a karst landscape, is common in Florida. The overburdened soil can now fall into this cave, and slowly, an arch-shaped cavity gets formed. As we saw in the beginning, the arch shape can carry a good amount of load, so this subsurface erosion leaves almost no signs on the surface sitting idle like a ticking time bomb. Now, the final episode, the trigger that converts this cavern into a sinkhole. A period of intense rain can rapidly add a huge amount of weight to the soil bridge over the cavern. The flowing water can also aggressively wash away supporting sediment. Eventually, a deadly sinkhole is formed. Even drought can be a trigger for sinkhole formation. During a drought, the water table can drop significantly. The water in a cavern actually provides buoyant support to the roof. When that water is gone, the roof loses that support and can be more prone to collapse. Pumping large amounts of water from wells also causes the same thing. It is very common for sinkholes to continue getting bigger after the initial collapse. The initial event is often just the first and most dramatic step in a longer process of stabilization. The growth can happen in two ways, through further rapid collapses or through slower, gradual erosion. The sinkhole we have discussed so far is known as a cover collapse type sinkhole, the most dangerous one. On the other hand, cover subsidence type sinkholes are the less dramatic way the overburden can fail. It happens when the overburden is different, primarily sandy and non-cohesive. In this case, a soil arch never forms. As soil is piped away into the bedrock, the sand particles simply slump and flow gradually into the void, like sand in an hourglass. This results in a slow, gentle sinking or subsidence at the surface, forming a shallow, bowl-shaped depression over time. This process is far less dangerous because it's gradual and visible. All these discussions lead to a very basic question. Is it possible to identify a sinkhole and cure it before it collapses? If you are struggling to close your doors, test the soil below your house with ground penetrating radar. It works by sending small pulses of high frequency electromagnetic waves into the ground and then recording the reflections of those waves to create an image of the subsurface. The most direct evidence is finding an air filled void underground. On a GPR scan, these often appear as bright, high contrast, hyperbolic reflections looking like a U. If it is a small void, you can inject gravel and fill it. If the cavity is big, it's better to vacate the location. In sinkhole-prone areas of Texas, it is a standard part of due diligence for large commercial or public projects to investigate and perform ground stabilization before construction begins. If the investigation confirms the presence of dangerous voids, the engineer will recommend a stabilization plan. The most common and effective method is grouting. Grouting obviously fills any underground cavities and encounters. More than just filling, 
Grouting pushes the loose soil together, increasing its density and strength. The state of Florida undisputedly experiences the highest frequency of sinkholes in the United States, earning a central portion of the state the nickname Sinkhole Alley. This area, encompassing Hernando, Hillsborough, and Pasco counties in the Tampa Bay region, is the epicenter of sinkhole activity. The entire Florida peninsula is built upon a thick platform of porous limestone. This carbonate rock is easily dissolved by naturally acidic rainwater that seeps underground. Over millennia, this process has created a vast network of underground caverns and voids. Winter Park Sinkhole might be the most famous sinkhole in Florida's history. The Winter Park Sinkhole opened in May 1981 in the central Florida city. In a single day, it grew to an astonishing 110 meters wide and 23 meters deep. Before it stabilized, the sinkhole swallowed a three-bedroom house and five Porsche cars. In July 2017, a sinkhole in Lando Lakes, Pasco County, rapidly expanded to become the largest in the county in recent decades. It eventually reached a width of about 80 meters and a depth of 15 meters. The sinkhole destroyed two homes. If you wonder where the largest sinkhole is located, it's in China, Xiaojai Tiankang Sinkhole. It plunges to a staggering 662 meters at its deepest point. It measures 626 meters by 537 meters across. Its immense size has allowed a complete, unique ecosystem to flourish within its depths, including an underground river and nearly 1,300 species of plants. And who can forget the recent sinkhole incident in Bangkok? The collapse occurred at the construction site of the future Vajira Hospital underground station, here, a high-pressure underground water pipe broke. The gushing water from the broken main flooded the void, which rapidly and catastrophically eroded the surrounding soil, washing much more of it into the tunnel. This created a massive cavern that could no longer support the road above. The road surface then caved in, creating a massive sinkhole 50 meters deep. Authorities also noted that recent heavy rains may have softened the soil, making it more susceptible to collapse. Remember, Bangkok does not have a karst landscape like Florida. The Bangkok sinkhole was formed purely due to human activities. It is interesting to note that sinkholes in Texas are almost man-made. Texas does have significant karst regions. A significant number of Texas's large sinkholes, especially in West Texas, were formed from decades of oil and gas extraction. Injecting water to force out petroleum can dissolve underground salt beds, creating massive cavities that eventually collapse. Some sinkholes had become historical tourist attractions. Senate and Sehanem sinkholes located in Turkey are excellent examples. These massive pits were formed by a subterranean river chemically eroding the limestone rock, a karst landscape, which eventually caused the ceilings of large underground caverns to collapse. The dangerous physics behind the sinkholes. I hope all of you enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave, please check out our Patreon page and try to support us. Take care, bye bye.